Hello beautiful souls and welcome to a very special deck list that I wanted to put together called Decks that Sustain Us During Seasons of Challenge. And the reason I wanted to put this together was because I'm currently writing a piece right now around what sustains us when we are in seasons of challenge. Really kind of coming from a place where I read a book about 20 years or so ago called The Invitation by Orion Mountain Dreamer. And many of you may have read the poem, The Invitation, but the book itself is such an incredible wealth of knowledge and wealth of just information around our spiritual practice. And what she spoke about in that was about cultivating a practice and a relationship with our practices when we're in a, a really good season so that we have them when we're in a season of challenge, when things don't always go our way, when we feel like we're losing hope and faith, like these are the things we can kind of draw on. So I've been writing out this um, particular piece that I'm working on right now called What Sustains Us During Seasons of Challenge. And part of that was the decks that I find really supportive and nourishing during this kind of season. And I really just wanted to share those decks with you here today. So that's kind of what we're going to go into. So I do definitely invite you to grab a cup of tea, pull up a chair and have a little bit of a journey with me. And I will say this because I'm looking at the decks now. They're definitely not decks that I would normally go into on a regular practice that would be that are sort of like inviting in deeper exploration. Most of you will know if you've been following me for a while, I love shadow work, it's what I teach. I love working with the dark goddesses. I'm all about digging into those sort of places within, really uncovering more of our own personal, our personal stories, our personal journey, to really help and support us move forward and grow. But during a season of challenge, we don't always want decks that probe and really sort of invite in that higher growth. Sometimes we need something that is more nourishing and nurturing and kind of just feels like, more of a tender experience and maybe like a more compassionate friend coming in to sort of hold space for you while you're going through something and it could be a long-term season of challenge or it could just be something that you're currently working through and it might be a day or a moment and these are just ones that I find are really nourishing and supportive versus more of those trigger and it's actually quite interesting when I was compiling it I have very specific ones that I work with Whereas so many of my other decks are very triggering, they're very kind of, they, they offer that deeper growth and insight, which is what I love. So these are ones that I personally turn to, I personally work with when I'm faced with a challenging season, a challenging period of my life, um, or something that I feel like I don't want to dig any deeper, like it's a day, I just don't want to dig any deeper, but maybe it's just like, kind of like a soft balm for the soul. And it's just like giving you that little bit of nourishment or encouragement that everything is going to be okay. Like when you're in sometimes a challenging season, we don't want to see it's all sunshine and rainbows, but we do want to sort of feel into that inner knowingness that everything is going to be okay. So these are the decks that I'm kind of working with at the moment. A couple of them are very new, so they are they wouldn't have made the list if I'd have made this list three, three or four months ago. Um, some of them I've been working with for many years, and I really just wanted to sort of go through some of these decks with you guys and share this with you. So first one I'm going to go with is a brand new deck, and it's one that I am absolutely in love with, and it is the... Medicine Heart Oracle by Alana Fairchild. So I'm not going to go through many of the cards or anything like that. This is really, it's not so much about the decks. It's about why we use them, the energy behind them. So I will give you, I'll just go through a few of the cards, but I won't sort of go through too many because I want this to more be about the energy. But this Medicine Heart Oracle, the reason I've been loving it so much is every single card I pull, this is my morning card, the Shaman's Mirror. I asked a very specific question. This is the card I got and oh boy, was it a very, 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 very distinct answer. It's so beautiful and loving and nourishing. It's very soft and gentle, even though it does have very strong messages coming through as well because it's so heart-centered. So it's kind of like the way I love Alana Fairchild's work and her decks, especially with these kind of decks, is that they kind of weave a beautiful story to really show why sometimes we go through these seasons, why sometimes we are faced with mirror aspects, for example, say for the Shaman's Mirror, which was my morning card, why we're faced with these mirror aspects within, you know, someone else is reflecting it back to us. Maybe we're seeing a season of sort of energy being reflected back to us. And it really offers us like a very, I want to say a soothing balm. That's kind of how I love seeing this energy of these decks. It's like it's a balm for the soul. Right? It's really, really honoring the places within you that need a little bit more tenderness rather than that kind of that push, which I am all about. And if you watch my readings, if you've ever journeyed with me, especially if you've worked with me with the dark goddesses, like we, we push, we probe, we trigger. That's the point of our growth. 
but there are times when that is not needed. So if I'm in, if I'm experiencing something myself and I'm currently in a, a really challenging situation, whatever that might be, I don't want to go into it and say, okay, well, what am I not witnessing here? What am I not facing? Because that can be more triggering. It can be more traumatizing in some ways. And sometimes we just need to sit in that stillness and really honor what is present. And this deck for me, I've found has been one of the most profound that I've worked with for this kind of energy. So it's a beautiful daily deck to pull one card. But the thing that I've also been finding is that if I'm really struggling to understand something that is that's coming up right now in the lessons that I've been experiencing, it's kind of giving me a very a very heart-centered perspective that maybe I wouldn't have seen otherwise. So this is why I'm loving this deck. It is a new deck. It's one that has just been released about a month or so ago from Lana Fairchild, but without a doubt has become one of my very fast favorites. And I'm using it every single day at the moment as my daily draw, but also if I really need something. This one here as well, I love, love, love this deck, is the Into the Lonely Woods by Lucy Cavendish. And the uh, artist is Dan May. If you've seen me do, um, I think I did, I don't know if I did a full review. I did it in the shadow work journey though. I actually spoke about this particular deck um, in the decks I love for shadow work. This is one of my favorite shadow work decks in the sense that it offers a really beautiful, again, a soft nourishing way to see and witness why we might be going through a season of isolation or a season of alone time where we're in a sort of an inner winter sort of journey. So sometimes if we're looking at shadow work, for example, we want the harder hitting, the harder hitting cards, the harder hitting messages to say, you know, maybe you haven't faced your abandonment wounds. Maybe you need to look a little bit deeper into this aspect. Whereas this particular deck is, again, it's a very sweet, very, very sweet deck. It's imagery wise, probably one of my all time favorite decks. I don't know why it just, it feeds a part of my soul that nothing else does. And I always say it's kind of like a cross between the Ewok and the where, where the wild things are. Like, that's how I feel about this deck. And the images are just beautiful. But it sort of says, that one there says, a time to rest a while. And then we have to watch over you. They're just, they're beautiful images, but they offer this kind of, again, a very delicate way of seeing, well, if you are in a season of alone, isolation, loneliness, what this is actually providing you, what this is serving you. So I don't pull this deck every day at the moment. It's not my daily deck. I'm using the Medicine Heart as one of my daily draws. And, but I am feeling really cool to use this kind of when I'm feeling very challenged by something that is um, really, really present um, because I have been in a very, very interesting season. I've been faced with a lot of health issues over the past sort of few months up to, you know, the past 12 months really. And what I really noticed with this particular deck is I'm really drawn to it when it kind of feels like, when is this going to end? When is this going to, when is this season going to shift? And what I really find with this is it always gives me a beautiful answer as to why you might still be stuck in that sort of portal. So I find this one is very, very tender, very loving, very nurturing. And sometimes we just need that, right? I've got to show you this one. This is one of my favorite cards ever. I just, I think it's stunning. I think it's beautiful. It makes me so happy to see that card. And it's not normally what I would say would be my traditional imagery, but this deck just, it speaks to me in such a beautiful way. This one here is one of my all time favorite decks. Will always be at the top of my list. I think it's just such a stunning deck. It's a stunning, um, it's stunning imagery. The messages are beautiful, but it also has a very close place to my heart because it is the Rumi Oracle and Rumi is one of my all time favorite poets. I could just, I, I would say this very, very tongue in cheek, but I could live off the words of Rumi. Like words, are one of my things, it's like one of my, the things that sustains me and Rumi's words specifically just touch that part in me that very few other poets or artists or even decks can really sort of touch. So I always read the guidebook with this deck. So if I ever pull a card, I've read this book probably cover to cover like 50 times at least. But I, whenever I pull a card from the Rumi Oracle, I read it, I read the poem, I read the opening message that Alana Fairchild has written. And then if I feel guided to, I'll go into sort of the deeper messages. But generally it's just something that gives me that little bit of solace. One, to maybe know that I'm not alone to maybe sort of feel connected to that which is greater than me. Um, it gives me also a really beautiful insight into 
anything to do with relationships as well. So if it's around relationships, I find this deck is really, really powerful for that. Sorry, just got a really itchy lip there. Um, it's really powerful for connecting into anything that is kind of, yeah, coming into relationships, anywhere where we're seeing our disconnection from self as well. So maybe if you've sort of been going through a little bit of a, a transient season and you're feeling a little bit, bit of disconnection, and I find this one kind of just taps me back in. It brings me back into my center. When I feel like I'm like losing faith or something like that, it kind of just brings that energy back in. So I really love it for that purpose. This is, I read it in ceremony. So if you ever come and sit in ceremony with me, if you come to the dark moon or the full moon, something like that, I will generally, like I would normally have a an Oracle deck and Rumi has been very present in many. Um, sometimes I don't sort of use it with clients or I don't use it with collective ceremonies because I'm working with it personally myself quite a lot and if I'm really in a season of working with a deck I love this card if you I'm really in a season of working with a deck myself personally I genuinely won't use it in client readings or collective readings too much because I'm kind of like in the energy of it myself so that is one of my all-time favorite decks which is the Rumi Oracle next one here is this is one I find really beautiful. I've just been working with it really closely again and kind of developing a deeper relationship with it than I ever have before. And this is the Sacred Earth Oracle. Not one that I thought would have been on this list, but I have been finding it myself really, really beneficial during this particular season. So the Sacred Earth Oracle is, it's really beautifully done because it has a couple different meanings. It's got the spiritual meaning, it's got the earthly meaning, and then it's got an additional insight kind of energy. But the reason I really like it is because it's not too punchy. It doesn't sort of give you that real hard kind of punch in the face of being like, this is what your issue is. This is what you're not seeing here. But it does it in a very gentle kind of way, especially if you read the spiritual meaning versus the earthly meaning. The earthly meaning can be a little bit more intense. Um, but I find, again, it's a very soft approach to seeing something that you might be missing. So this one isn't so much about really honoring the heart and like really allowing for that sort of stillness, but it, it kind of gives me the insight that I need into something that I might be missing or that I'm dealing with, but in a more gentle, loving way. And I think really sometimes we need that. We need the softer approach. And if you're listening to this and you've watched me do readings, you'll know that I don't do soft very, like we don't do soft very often. There are seasons we do that though, like for the dark moon ceremony, for example, normally the dark moon and the end of month ceremony that we do in Patreon is very soft. It's very gentle. When I do readings, it's normally like, well, if I'm going to do a reading, I'm, I want to give you answers. So there isn't always a lot of softness. There's, there's softness from the approach, but sometimes the messages can be quite hard hitting. And what I personally know in my own season, in my own journey, is that there are times when that has great value and impact and other times where that can be a little bit a little bit sort of like agitating, right? And I'm all about opening up to the triggers, but we do sometimes need that softness. So it's knowing that we can always kind of approach things in the energy that we need. And the decks can kind of guide us into that. I am definitely feeling very strongly called to a few different styles of decks right now. One of them is this, what the, this sort of deck list that I'm doing right now is the soft, gentle decks. And the other are any that are kind of really inspired by the dark goddess, the dark feminine, that, that, that gives me that energy internally. A lot of the other decks, myself personally, I'm just not feeling that same strong call to right now because I know when I'm going through something, my own internal sort of journey, I'm very strongly guided to work with certain energies and those cards will sort of call to me. And this is why I want to do this deck list of being decks to sustain us because sometimes we kind of feel like, why am I drawn to that deck? Because the energy isn't really allowing for that same reciprocal energy or relationship. And if you work in relationship with your cards, which I personally do, it's they they are like a they're a relationship like they are a relationship for me. It's like I I really feel their voice and I feel their story and what they're wanting to offer. And so when I like look at look at my decks and I look at sort of the the energy, it's like I can feel the energy of what I really really need. So this one here for me, I just find is it's a very gentle way of seeing the shadow aspect of self that maybe if I was doing it with a different deck would be a little bit too hard for me on a given day. So that is the Sacred Earth Oracle, which is really, really beautiful. I'm going to leave this one to last because it's one of my all-time favorite decks. And then we're going to go with this one. This is the only tarot deck on the list because 
I didn't realize this until today when I was like really compiling this and putting it together. I use the tarot deck every day and I have different ones that I work with. Um, I have the Crow Tarot, which I work with a lot. Um, it was my daily deck until I started working just recently. I started working with a different one as my daily draw. But the Crow Tarot for me is beautiful, but it's very, very truth telling. It's very, very hard hitting. And sometimes I just don't want that. The other one that I'm working with daily is my, it's the Night Sun Tarot, which is beautiful. But again, it's offering a deeper sort of insight. And there are some days you just want to leave that stuff to the side for another day. So this is the only tarot deck that I kind of go to when I just want a softer, gentle kind of approach. Because I did realize that I have mostly in my, in my collection, I have a lot of quite dark themed, shadowy energy inspired kind of decks that don't have a specific theme. So I have some that are very specific to relationships. I have some that are very specific to shadow work um, and very specific to say um, soul purpose work. So I have decks that are very specific to those themes. When it comes to just like a general energy, most of mine are a little bit more sort of down that darker path or down the sort of more of the intense energy. They don't offer the same solace. This one does. And it is the Good Tarot by Colette Baron Reed. I resisted this deck for a really long time. I just, I didn't feel really called to it. And then when I got it, I finally understood why I needed it. So it's a really beautiful deck. It's very gentle. It has sort of a very soft energy to it, but the way it's written as well, which is why it's called the Good Tarot, the way it's written is kind of offering, it offers affirmations. It offers a way to see it from a positive sort of place, a positive perspective, rather than, you know, let's just say, I want to find one, Three of Air, perfect example. Three of Air, which is the Three of Swords, which is normally quite an intense card. If you get a Three of Swords card, you're just like, oh, I don't necessarily want to see that today. Right? And then this one, though, it says, Silver linings, natural departures, rejection is God's protection. A third party helps me see the truth of this situation. What is truly mine can never be withheld from me. Rejection is spirit's protection. It's in my best interest to let go and allow for something better to take place. It is my highest good to see the truth regardless of temporary discomfort. This too shall pass. Rather than there's a lot of sorrow and grief here, right? It kind of gives you a beautiful, softer energy, a little bit more tender, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more loving, right? That's kind of how this, this particular deck feels to me. So if I want to work with tarot and I'm really kind of feeling a little bit stretched, Maybe my energy is really flat. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit sort of over emotional or sorry, someone's just trying to call me there. If I'm feeling, I won't say over emotional in a negative way, but like in, I'm in a hyper emotional state. I find this deck particularly can kind of bring me out of that and really anchor me into what I need to see, into what I need to sort of journey into. So that is the good tarot. And that is the only tarot on this list. The next one is a newer one as well, and it wasn't one that I was going to include, but the reason I'm including is because I do find it gives a really beautiful narrative and a beautiful story, and sometimes we kind of need that, plus I also love working with Mary Magdalene. So this is the, oh my god, the Mystique Magdalene Oracle, and it was released this year, so it is a newer deck. And I personally love working with Mary Magdalene, so I find sometimes... You know, it could be that there. this is very, very, very distinctly, I feel, for relationships and for soul purpose work. I find this deck is really supportive of that. And trying to see, again, the bigger picture in something, what's going on, um, why is it really present, but in a very gentle way that kind of helps guide you further on your soul mission, whatever that might be for you. So I found this one's been really, really beautiful and nourishing. I don't use it as often. It's definitely a newer deck that I, I use sort of sporadically, I would say. But when I do pull it out, it's always just gives me the perfect energy that I need for whatever it is I'm navigating. And I've just found it a really, it's, I find this one's kind of like, almost like Mary Magdalene is holding, holding the container, holding space for you while she's showing you what you need to see that maybe you've been avoiding or whatever it might be. So that is the Mary Magdalene, no, what am I saying? The Mary Magdalene Oracle, the Mystique of Magdalene Oracle, which is really beautiful. 
The next deck is the final one. So I'm try, try to keep this, this list a little bit short and try to keep it short and sweet and not have the video too long. This deck is probably one of my, again, one of my all time favorite decks. I've had it, this is the longest deck I've ever had. So this deck is the oldest deck I've got. Um, and it is very well loved, very well worn, and you can't buy this particular edition. I think there's, they've got the 25th edition out now, 25th year edition. Um, and so the, the one that I have, you would like the, the imagery might be a little bit different. The language might be a little bit different, but I love it. And this is the universal love Oracle. And it's probably because I've had it the longest. I've got such a deep relationship with it. It always gives me the truth. It always gives me the answer that I need. But this deck is done again in a very, very gentle, loving kind of way. Um, and nearly every theme as well that you can kind of connect into that you might be navigating in your life, this kind of covers every theme. So the first card you can obviously see here is physical body. So if you get this card, like I've been getting a lot lately, nurturing your physical body. It's done in a very, again, gentle way. It's like it's non-probing. It's non-judgmental. Um, which I like, even though like I do like sort of decks that are a little bit judgmental sometimes um, because they give you a really deep insight. But this one is just this beautiful, you know, level of abundance. It's like, okay, what do we need for abundance? When I started working with this deck, you know, 25 or so years ago, um, you know, I would have pulled abundance being like, yay, abundance is coming in. Now I know better. I work with the energy a little bit different. But whenever I see this, I'll be like, okay, abundance, abundance is the energy. What could be a clarifying message that I need? So I do work with this deck a lot now as either a clarifier or I work with a tarot deck to clarify the messages. So sometimes it's like giving you a soft little affirmation, a little, like a little, like a little touch of love. But other times it's like really allowing yourself to see, okay, what is the clarification? If, if the physical body is my problem, right, with my health, if my physical body is the problem, what's the clarification that I need to see with this? What is the thing that I need to nurture within this space? If I'm seeking more abundance, right, what is the thing that I need to, to focus on with that? So you could either clarify that with another, another oracle or another tarot. Um, but when I first used to do it, I used to do the spreads exactly as they were in the book and I'd pull my daily one and then I'd do my, my three past, present, future. And I was very, very diligent with using the book because this was my first experience into Oracle. And so I really do have such a strong connection and relationship with this particular deck that every single time I pull it, I'm like, wow, that's exactly what I needed to see today. Transmutation. Love that card. We have Blessings. I just want to go through a couple that I love. Love this one. Transients. I love the imagery. This is Tony Carmine Salerno. Um, love his imagery. Tantric Union. Love that one. There is one of my favorite cards of all time. I want to just grab that picture. It's love. It's beautiful. I want to find it. Let me find it. There we go. I'll just show you this last one. Soulmate. That's one of my favorite all time cards. I think it's just such a stunning image. And uh, yeah, so it covers like dreams. It has, you know, past connection stuff. There's retreat. There's time for spiritual growth. There's sacred union. It pretty much has every theme that you could potentially be going through in your life but it's done in such a loving way. So it really does feel like it's the universe speaking to you from a place of love. And that's kind of how we're receiving these messages. So that's the final deck that I have in this list here that is really about finding decks. So this isn't about saying any of these decks might be right for you. These are just the ones that work for me. But finding a deck that you feel is really, really nourishing to you, that's really supportive, that's like sitting with a beautiful close friend over a glass of wine or a cup of tea and having a conversation to really feel like you are like held and supported. And I think that's really invaluable when we are in seasons of challenge because, you know, we can continue to dive deep into our shadows. And I'm all about that. Like I teach shadow work for a reason because I think it's so profound and I think it has such strong value in how we show up in our lives. But it's just knowing that there is a time and place for everything. There is a time and place to be held in a tender, loving sort of energy. And there is a time for allowing the triggers to really inspire the next level of your evolution and growth. So that is my little deck list. I will hopefully have the, the written um, thing done up very soon. I'm still working on it. 
it was really 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 long so I wanted to try to cut it down a little bit and as soon as that is ready I will post it down in the description box for anyone who sort of watches this later um, but otherwise I will post it up as well as soon as it is ready to go if you want to have a look at that because I go into other practices and the reason why creating a practice that is really really nourishing that is the minimum practice that you do it really establishes a level of connection to your soul and to to, to your growth in your journey. So for me, when I look at that, it's the things that when you're in a great state, like when you're amazing and like life is beautiful and it's flourishing and you're in your blooming season and you do all these different practices or the rituals or the things that are like really loving and joyful to you. You know, you might have 50 different practices that you can do in that time. When I see people's list of all the things they do, that's how I used to be as well, a list of all the things they do every single day to like fill their daily practice. That can be really really beautiful but we don't always have the capacity for that and i was taught a number of years ago now i've been doing the same thing every day for the last about eight years one practice that i do every day and if that's all i get done if that's the only thing that i do i've maintained my connection to the practices and so it's really cultivating practices for when you're good so when you are in a season of challenge that you still are connected to at least the bare minimum and that's kind of what I'm going to be going into in this particular article. I may also do a video on the entire sort of thing and what it really feels like to cultivate these practices that sustain us, that give us that internal soul sustenance when the world feels like it's chaos and it is really kind of pushing you at every edge and you don't know how much more you can withstand and it does feel kind of a little bit overwhelming at times and it's these things that really anchor us, they ground us into reconnecting back to faith, reconnecting back to self, soul, whatever that looks like for you. And for me, it's always, I the way I always personally see it is, it gives me the opportunity and the space to reconnect back to my soul voice because my soul voice is the only thing I listen to. You, you know, I'll sometimes listen to the external chatter, I'll sometimes listen to other people's opinions, but generally I'll try to put that out of my mind. When I'm in a season of challenge, I really, really strongly hold that boundary that I only listen to my soul voice. I don't listen to the external noise. I don't listen to other people. I only listen to that soul voice, but we need to give it space to be able to hear that. And that's really what cultivating these practices is all about. So I hope this gives you a little bit of guidance as to how you can kind of work with your different decks, knowing which decks to use when I think is really, really important because it gives you a deeper experience with them. If you use a deck that you find really triggering and challenging when you're in a, a challenging season, you won't necessarily receive the messages the way you may need to. They're always going to be right, but you may not receive them. And our ability to receive the messages is everything. I can give you 50 messages, but if you can't receive them, it's not going to change anything. And so it's knowing the energy that you need to be in in order to receive the messages that are going to support you the most at this point in time. And that's really how I see these particular decks. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight to play around with your decks and the way you work with them and maybe give you a bit of encouragement to really create a, uh, develop and create like a deeper relationship with your cards so they can offer you kind of that solar space when you need it. As always, sending you so much love, beautiful souls, and I'll connect again soon.